Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And I've got a very curious tweet to share with you. It came from Bitso. Bitso is the exchange that facilitates the on-demand liquidity using the digital asset XRP for Mexico, the world's largest corridor. And uh, this is just three words, to the moon, with very specific memes on either side. This meme is actually one that's called Dire Tide. It was used in the past with a big multiplayer battle arena game tournament that took place in 2012 and 2013 on Halloween. And it has since ended, but this meme lives on. It is, uh, yeah, the tournament was put on by the billion dollar publisher Valve. They were founded by former Microsoft employees and it it's, it's something that really caught my eye because I'm very sensitive to these, well, text faces, if you want to call them, the cow moji, cow meaning face, moji meaning letter. And in Japan, there are 10,000 of them. So Japanese are just not satisfied with being able to choose like one that's happy face, one that's crying face, one that has hearts in the eyes. You know, in the West, I think people are quite, quite capable of just using the five or six that we have to choose from, but not in Japan. There's a lot of thought that goes into which Kaomoji you're going to use because it really gets down to the heart of exactly how you feel. So that's why when I saw this, I just said to myself, wow, was this just a random choice or is there some hidden message here? Because is it possible they're trying to tell us that XRP is now in the ecosystem of some big gaming company and they are facilitating that XRP on their exchange for that purpose. I mean, no, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but you have to admit with me that this is kind of a strange tweet, don't you think? Well, I have asked them. Uh, so if I do get an answer back, I'll let you know. And sticking with Bitso, I really want to talk about Bitso and Brazil because there is a lot to talk about in those two subjects and they cross over quite a bit. Here we are on a Pantera presentation that was put on, uh, put out on June 2nd. They recently have brought money to the table and invested in Bitso and CoinMe. Ironically, these are both two projects that Ripple has also uh, invested into. And if you don't know, Pantera, which is a big VC up on Sand Hill Road, the Sand Hill is, uh, yeah, it's in the Bay Area. Um, they invested in Ripple. There are probably 50 some VCs on Sand Hill. And like I was going to tell you, it runs from up in the hills near Portola Valley, and then it that's on the west side of 280 and then it comes down past Sharon Heights golf course and then goes past the Stanford golf course. Menlo, Menlo Atherton is to the left and Palo Alto is to the right. Go past the university and then it ends at Alma. Alma is a street that runs from basically Mountain View into downtown Palo Alto. And so it's a, it's a quite a mm, big road that cuts across the south part of the San Francisco Bay Area. And yeah, there are some 50 of them that are the driving force to the capital that funds a lot of these projects in the Silicon Valley, most of them being IT projects. So I am just always fascinated with how this ecosystem as it matures, you know, is just crossing over. So we've got this really big crossover here with Ripple, Pantera, CoinMe, and Bitso. Now, just talking about what CoinMe is up to, not in great depth, but I do want to tell you that they have, um, yeah, received this $1.5 million from Ripple last summer, and they uh, have been working on putting their Coinstar kiosk in the grocery stores. And because grocery stores have been deemed as 
essential. They really haven't seen any slowdown during this recent um, change of our economies. And it is really, they're doing a very good job at paving the way for onboarding people with cash to crypto. Uh, you can basically, what they say you can do a click, two clicks, insert cash and click and you're done. You're, you've got your, um, you've got your crypto, but I kind of am really wanting to ask them, where is the XRP? I mean, it's been nine months since Ripple gave them that investment and still we don't see that they have added XRP. Now, I don't know the whole story. So just maybe, possibly the 1.5 million that they got from Ripple gave them enough capital to stay alive till they could get their next round of capital because on May, Seventh, they did get 10 million in a new round that was led by Pantera. So possibly now they have enough money to build out that offering. I hope so. It seems a little rude <laughs> that they took the 1.5 million from Ripple's spring and then they haven't added anything in the way of XRP in nine months. It just seems a little yeah, unbelievable. So I'm going to show you some of the portfolio of Pantera, and you're going to recognize a lot of logos here. This is coins.ph right here, and they are the on-demand liquidity provider in the Philippines. So this is quite interesting that they have uh, crossed over there. And there is another ODL exchange, and that's Bitstamp. That is in the Pantera portfolio as well. And there's some interesting, exciting news with Bitstamp. They announced that they were going to add the British pound. And as of five o'clock on June 3rd, the British pound with XRP is live. Everybody hopes that this is being uh, folded into an ODL corridor. I am positive a lot of people are going to be tracking this. And you can see that there is some volume. So it is live. And uh, just get on Twitter. There's a lot of different people following the ODL volumes. So I think this will be another one that people are paying attention to. All right. Now, back to that presentation. Because it has a video. The video is about an hour long. But there's three parts of it that I want to highlight where... Dan from Bitso is talking. And the first one is going to talk about their remittance business. Listen to this. It's really, really remarkable what's happening here. It's come to life. And, um, and, and we, you know, we, we just got introduced with this, uh, with this thing that we've been building on remittances. And so the U.S. to Mexico corridor represents today the largest remittance corridor in the world. It's about $36 billion that flow from the U.S. to Mexico every single year. And 7.5% uh, and of that is flowing through Pizzo. The, the little asterisk there is because it's on a weekly basis, because obviously this is a product that's growing. And so I am hoping that uh, by the end of the year, I'll have a number that I can share with everyone. That's uh, the, the amount of yearly remittances that we were able to to do via crypto, but this is a huge number, right? This is, a, this is an enormous number, and we believe this is a huge win case um, and, and a very bull, bullish case for the technology. Yeah, it's enormous, an enormous number. I mean, think about it, $35 billion corridor, the largest corridor in the world, and they are capturing 7.5% of those remittances on a weekly basis. and it's growing. So just think how many exchanges want to be an on-demand liquidity partner now. Okay, it's now going to jump to the 14 minute mark and you'll hear about how liquid this corridor is. All right, here we go. That time I hadn't seen before. And that has led us to be the most liquid exchange in the region. So we're one of the few exchanges in the region that has attracted institutional players that want to trade there. So we have large institutional players that are basically market making, arbitraging, providing liquidity on the on the platform. But so this is exactly what on-demand liquidity needs for Ripple. They need those institutional players coming in. 
that are market making and arbitraging. Uh, it, it's beautiful. So if they can duplicate this all around the globe, I know it's a big, <laughs> tall order, but when you have this success story with Bitso, I think people are going to be saying, hey, hey, what's that? What's what's going on over there? Yeah, it's huge. All right. And I'm going to take you to now the biggest part of his presentation, which is the best. I did, saved it for last here. It's at the 16 minute 18. I think I'll start it right here for you. It's very sensitive to get just the right spot. All right. This is talking about foreign exchange, FX. This is amazing. Remittances on a yearly basis. And then one of the things that we've started to see, and I think is one of the, one of the, 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 the you know, one of the relevant things here with, with USDC is, um, if you look at how, how sort of FX markets look like and FX trading and, and, and settlement, um, crypto can do that just way better than, than, than these legacy systems that exist all over the world. And so we think there's a huge opportunity in just, uh, in just crypto take, overtaking the, the FX markets. And, um, and, and we want to be center of that, right? We're seeing government. So they want to be in the center of it. That FX trading and settlement, crypto can take over the FX markets. That's huge. And I think that they have discovered how to do it. And I think that there's going to be probably a lot that emulate that and copycat going forward. Really exciting stuff. I'm really happy to see Bitso is aggressively growing this use case. And you can also see that the money that they got from Ripple actually was going to help them expand further into Latin America. And on May 6th, they actually are looking for some different positions. Uh, they posted someone not only for Brazil, as you see here, but also for Argentina, Chile, Paraguay, Uruguay. They want somebody in charge of the commercial development in these countries. So they really are going to be an exchange to keep your eye on. All right, Ripple, the CEO, Brad Garlinghouse, met with the president of the Central Bank of Brazil. That's really been quite the buzz, not just within the Ripple community, but I can tell you from the research that I did today, it is in the buzz for many sectors and in many languages throughout all of the fintech news. And the reason why, well, I think I can shed a little light on that. This is the president, Roberto uh, Campos Neto, and he is the president of the Central Bank of Brazil. And he had two other people on that call with him. The one person I want to tell you, which caught my eye, is Octavio Ribeiro Damaso. The reason why I'm interested in this gentleman is because he's the deputy deputy governor for regulation of the central bank. And I went back just to see if I could find out what his position was on fintechs and crypto. And I found a couple of interesting things. This is from 2017. He thought that fintechs had brought efficiency to their space. And now this is the best. Listen to this. He was asked, what is the innovation that the Brazil's uh, central bank is most looking at at the moment? Okay. One topic that has great potential to promote change in the way the financial system operates is blockchain. New technology for storing and sending data that promises more security. The Central Bank of Brazil is deepening in this technology and understanding its power to exchange, share, and validate information and even promote international transfers. So he is, he's on it. I'm telling you, he's on it. And then if we just take a look at something that's a little more recent, this is June. He says that the Central Bank of Brazil has adopted an innovation 
and supports fintech, the agenda of fintech. Yeah, it just went back over to Portuguese, sorry. But um, no problem in this part of the world. I think that it's very clear uh, why Mr. Garlinghouse was there with his big guns. Now, this is the Cointelegraph Brazil version of that meeting. And I will tell you, this is so interesting too. They believe that the reason why Mr. Garlinghouse came was because they needed to talk about PICS. And for PICS, PICS is a domestic centralized uh, new payments, instant payment system for Brazil. And they need it badly. They really do. They have been on a very old legacy system and the new system is going to go live this November and it will bring uh, the consumers a 24 by seven access to payments, which they haven't had. They have not been able to do banking like after three in the afternoon and forget holidays and weekends. And it will incorporate a means for federal tax collections for them. It'll also give the consumers a chance to pay their bills like their utility bills. Um, it'll also uh, pay out those social, social, social security payments. And it's a P2P, P2B domestic payments um, infrastructure, all right? But you're going to see here that there's a little bit more to it. So when we first just take a look at a couple quotes from the president, Roberto Campos Neto, he thinks that it has happened in terms of creating digital currency, cryptocurrencies, encrypted assets. They have become from the need to have this instrument. And with these characteristics, you have cheap, fast, transparent, and secure environment. And it is important to mention that they have an angle, okay? The central bank has an angle of cheapening the operational transactional cost of transferring money. And that this is going to transform the payment world in Brazil. And we believe that this system, together with the other systems to come, being unified throughout in 2021, there'll be the differentiation in a way of making financial tra uh, transactions in Brazil. So let's take a look at that PIX system and what they say on their central bank website. This is it. And this is the single settlement infrastructure as it is right now. Um, there's no component being shown for cross-border remittances. But what I will show you is that it has been built to actually incorporate it. So here you have the Brazilian instant payments ecosystem will have a flexible and open structure, a measure that seeks to guarantee access and the emergence of participants offering innovative and differentiated services. So this is all about other payment service providers. And switches can be used to add multiple participants to their connectivity structure. So, yep, just flip that switch with Ripple. <laughs> sure, this is why Mr. Garlinghouse was on a video conference with the Central Bank of Brazil. Seems pretty clear to me. All right, everybody, I'm gonna jump to some fluff. And last night I was able to do my daily, evening, nightly blog, and I did it in just three paragraphs as I'm going to stick with this format. One paragraph for the world, one paragraph for the XRP community, and one about what's happening on a smaller scale with me. So I talked about the Tokyo usually being in full color, but yesterday, for the first time, this rainbow bridge that you see here was turned to red. And the red color is being urged, uh, it's, it's urging people to take caution because the numbers for our 
situation in the in and around the world is going in the wrong direction. So the government instructs a change when the average number of new daily cases is above 20. Now we went into phase one just this last Monday and relaxed. Uh, people are back on the trains and people are going back to work. But as you can see, and I'm going to show you a live shot of the Rainbow Bridge now, it's in red. So, so fast we have moved uh, in the wrong direction. So we are, um, gosh, I don't know. I have a feeling that if we keep increasing those numbers, uh, we're going to go back into the directive to stay home and probably, yeah, I, because I, I don't, I don't think they're going to continue moving to phase two and phase three of the relaxing of, um, of what everybody's doing, unfortunately. And they even started talking about if they're going to be able to maybe streamline the Olympics that are proposed to happen in 2021. And I don't even know if that's going to happen. And I thought that the most um, unfortunate part of that whole bit was that they weren't going to be able to share this project called the One Kimono. So this is the kimono that was designed for Brazil. And they were going to use them in the opening ceremony. And every country had their own unique kimono made and that represented that country. And this is uh, Brazil, which I think it captures it so well. And I'm just so sad that this project's not going to be able to be shared, I don't think. This is what the Brazilian kimono looks like when it is worn. It's really, really pretty. Well, to try to end on a high note, I decided to leave my wacky fluff for the end instead of the beginning tonight. And this is uh, a collaboration of a toy company, Bandai, and of course, the cup noodle company, Nissan Food. Maybe I shouldn't have said that because I gave it away because I was going to ask you, can you figure out what this, what this plastic 3D printed item is? Well, what it is, is this. <laughs> it has actually been printed out into kind of a do-it-yourself put together puzzle. And it looks, I think you probably click these parts together, I'm guessing, because I can kind of see that it has these uh, shapes here that look like it just clicks together. But when you do finally get all the parts together, it'll look like this. I think it's going to be very successful. Two days ago, they started taking pre-orders. This country loves to build things. And it loves models. So no doubt this is going to be sold out very soon. All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.